Then all at once a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. And they were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and were inspired to speak in tongues, empowered by the Spirit to speak in languages they had never learned. And Josh and I, the the last couple of weeks, have really just been wanting to pray into and seek the Lord about what is the Pentecost promise that you have for us today. And as Josh mentioned, the revelation that he was pouring on us was that Pentecost wasn't a historical one-time event. Pentecost was an initiation into a future reality. Pentecost was the beginning It was the beginning of the kingdom of God being unleashed on the earth. And so that day, that moment was an initiation of the sons of God, the daughters of God being empowered with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came on them in power and they, and it, it birthed the the church of God, the kingdom of God, the bride of Christ into the earth. And the Lord spoke to me and it has been, our nation has been so heavy on my heart. It has been so heavy on my heart. I lay in bed at night and I, I, I feel this heaviness on my heart about the nation. And Josh spoke to me just a couple days ago and he said, Amy, the Lord, the Lord told you that you're called to the nations. But this nation is the nation that he is putting on the heart, on your heart right now to cry out for. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, you've been asking for too little. This Pentecost is about the nations, that he wants to enlarge our perspective, that this Pentecost is about the nations. And it starts right here with a humble, a humble group of believers coming in faith and saying, why not here? Why not now? Why not here? Why not now? We need the more of you, Jesus. We need a fresh outpouring. We need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire because we can't not do the will and the work of God apart from a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this time. And I just want to, he was showing me something and I believe it's very prophetic. Josh and I were on our, our back porch this morning reading over this and praying over this, taking communion over this moment, this Kairos moment. And it says in verse three, chapter two, verse three, it says, all at once a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes that separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. And that um, pillar, that pillar of fire, when we looked it up, um, it actually is the same pillar of fire that led Israel from bondage into the promised land. Okay, so this same pillar of fire manifests again on the original day of Pentecost in order to initiate a new beginning from dead religious structures into the powerful life of the Spirit. Okay, so that same pillar of fire that took the Egyptians out of slavery in Egypt into a land of the promise appeared to the disciples on the original day of Pentecost and said, I'm taking you out of a religious system of structures into a life in the spirit. And that is what he has for us today, church. That is what he has for us today. That America has fallen back into an Egyptian system of slavery and religious structures. And we're saying, Jesus, yes, to the leading out by your spirit into the life of the spirit spirit, by the spirit, for your glory. So we just want to pray into that for a moment. We just want to open our hearts wide and say, yes, God, why not here? Why not now? Why not this, this small group of people that seems seemingly insignificant, but in your kingdom, you want to use us to reach the nations. You want to use us to see revival spread to the nations. And so we just want, if you would be willing, just whatever it looks like to you to open your heart wide and in a posture of just saying, Holy Spirit, baptize me afresh. Holy Spirit, a fresh outpouring of your spirit today over my life, over my family, over this body. Why not here? Why not now? Holy Spirit, we make ourselves open and available to you. Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we love you. Jesus, we love you. You are the Holy Spirit on the earth today, and we love you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to be having a time together this morning of just yielding, yielding to the fresh wind of the Spirit. And so we just wanted to prepare our hearts in faith for what he wants to do and is doing in this moment. Before we, we're just being led by the Lord right now. <laughs> and I just feel like as Amy was declaring and decreeing and really summoning a call to all of us, Sounding an alarm is what she was doing. Um, we're moving into a new era where the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. You are led by His Spirit, f Spirit-filled sons and daughters ruling and reigning. And I feel like we're supposed to do something this morning before we continue in this. But Mary is a prophetic picture of somebody who stood for the rebuilding of a city and the kingdom of God to come rushing in. How many years have you been here, Mary? Oh, don't even ask. I can't remember. <laughs> but um, I just feel like she's supposed to pray. and We're supposed to agree over this city because the scripture says they will rebuild ruined cities. And guess what? Our city is in ruins right now. Our city is in ruins. Neighborhoods are in ruins. Businesses are in ruins. This, you must understand, the strongest economic um, contributor to this city is in a crisis. The University of Wyoming. They're in crisis mode. And the Lord wants to rebuild ruined cities. He wants to rebuild this city through the sons of God being led by the Spirit of God ushering in the kingdom realm. And so she's going to pray and then we're going to do a declaration prayer that we have over our city. So I want everybody to stand up and let's declare and decree as a governing ruling body in this city that carries authority, that carries power, that carries influence. So if you could pray and then we'll declare that. Oh, Lord, we just thank you that Pentecost is fresh. The world has been locked down since before Passover, but it is this week that it has begun to open up. And this is the end. It's the beginning of the end of this COVID in this nation and we are opening up as sons of God and I just say Lord let your spirit fall on us so that it isn't just for us here but we would be carriers of the power of the Holy Spirit to this city wherever we work wherever we live wherever our children go to school, that it wouldn't be just about us going, isn't this lovely, revive us. We're revived with power to be witnesses. And we're to be witnesses in Laramie, Wyoming, the U.S., and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And Lord, I looked at this little one over here. She left a baby with this COVID, came back toddling, laughing and, and holding a little banner and it was like that was a representation of freedom yeah. and we're just saying Lord let that spirit be in every one of us of joy of freedom of life that we can be an impact and the Lord let us be carriers of life to the city of Laramie Wyoming so be it amen Amen. Well, let's put up our, our decree this morning. And I want you to decree this with the Spirit on you. And let's decree this over Laramie, Wyoming. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for new economic wells to be created in Laramie. Favor for our city with CEOs, government leaders, and kings manufacturing firms that produce goods for the nations and provide new jobs for our people, technology to establish new markets, energy sources, and efficient solutions to grow as a population, laws and courts that measure with the justice and the freedom of our land's constitution, civil servants that encourage entrepreneurs, 
media known for wisdom and truth, natural resources released, harvested, sold, and reproduced, education, books, and universities that develop mind molders who influence the influential, capital to build small businesses that provide services, arts, and culture attracting both young and old, a medical community known for integrity and excellence, repentance from small thinking and envy, courage to recognize opportunities and make wealth, abundance to bless the world and the prudence to save and invest, revelation to pass on wealth to our children's children. We declare that when the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. In Jesus' name, amen. In just a minute, we're going to go into a time of encountering the person of the Holy Spirit together. Isn't that going to be fun? Yes. So I want to um, bring a couple of verses to you before we jump into this. First of all, when we talk about revival, we're talking about people falling madly in love with the person of Jesus. And they come under his kingly rule. They don't just know about the Lord. They are doing a relationship with the Lord. The difference between the, a, a member of the Christian religion and someone who's a disciple of Christ, one is they know about God, the other is they walk with God. How many of you understand what I'm saying? We walk with Jesus in constant intimacy with Him, and we know that He has several, um, several roles. We know He's the bridegroom. He's the bridegroom and we're the bride. We know that Jesus is king. We know that Jesus is um, our judge. We also know he's our friend. So the spirit of the Lord is the spirit of Jesus. And we can walk in constant intimacy with the spirit of the Lord as a way of life. And I'm going to read out of uh, Romans 8 in just a minute. The, the number one identification of a child of God, of a daughter, son of God, is how well they are led by the Spirit of God. I got a little tin ring. There's nothing I can do about okay, maybe turn the volume down just a little bit. Maybe, I don't know. Um, and by the way, we want to welcome Kansas City. They're watching live and other groups. So everybody say, hey, Kansas City. Yeah, we love our family there. Okay, so there is something interesting. There's, a, there's, a, there's an exhortation that the Apostle Paul gives to his spiritual son, Timothy, as it pertains to the person of the Holy Spirit. And he says to Timothy, and therefore to us, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, he goes, For this reason I remind you, to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying out of hands. He goes, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline or a sound mind, the mind of Christ, which we're going to look at in just a second. So basically, the implication here is that the that there's a quenching or a grieving of the Holy Spirit that can happen in our life. A dullness can take over. Do you know what I'm saying? A dullness. And here's Paul saying to his son Timothy, fan into flames the gift of the Spirit inside of you. Now, how many of you ever, like, uh, been around a campfire? Especially in, in, a, in a rainy moment, right? What does rain do to a fragile little campfire, right? It swelters, it pushes it down, it makes it smoky and nasty, and it's hardly hanging on for dear life. How many of you know, have been around a fire that's hanging on for dear life? <laughs> okay, so what is, the, what is the strategy for rebuilding that fire and saving your life, okay? <laughs> what is it? Putting in dry wood and then whoof, whoof, Oof, you flint. Oxygen is required to stimulate the fire. Notice in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit is, is described as fire, and then the wind came. So wind and fire are all poetic language for the person of the Spirit. And we can actually activate the fire of the Spirit in our life. 
That's a big deal. So how many of you know you, you've experienced dullness as it pertains to your relationship with the Holy Spirit, right? Come on, be honest. Of course you have. I have. You have. And it's, it's really kind of a, how can I say this? Sometimes, and I'm in this mode right now in my physical fitness, I literally lost so much momentum in my physical fitness that I lost my interest in working out. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Like, like that's bad. Like, I don't even... I don't even want to work out. Now, I'm not, that's not normally me, but I'm so out of shape, I don't even want to get in shape. I don't even want to start the process. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so, and I, but I look at myself, and I, I'm, I'm literally breathing heavy, just going up the stairs, and I'm going, this has got to stop, Tim. Something's, please rescue me. Rescue me. So in the, in, the, in the relationship with Jesus, the person of the Holy Spirit, sometimes that can happen where we get so dull so kind of like worldly and funky that we just don't even have the energy to fan into f flames the gift of the Holy Spirit. Guess what? That's why we need each other. That's why we need the Word of God. Because when I see somebody else going, hey, come on, walk with me, walk with me, you know? It's like, well, at least I can walk. And then the walking starts to feel good. And then I can go from a walk to a faster walk. <laughs> anyway, so I need you, I need the Word of God to stimulate, to fan into flames the, the, the intimacy, the fire of the Holy Spirit. But here's a crazy thought. Once I get, start getting in shape and I get past that terrible feeling of pain, awfulness, it takes about, whatever, seven or eight hard workouts before my body starts saying, whoa, I like this. I was talking to Mono the other day. He's a biker. He loves to bike. He's from France, and so that's, I think he was born with a bicycle somewhere. And anyway, he says he hates the first 10 bike rides. They rip his heart out. They rip his lungs out, especially in Wyoming wind. It's brutal. He says, but after that, he, that addiction kicks in, that, that godly addiction for fitness. And then you can't let it go. Now you've now you got to just, woo! Now it, you're, you're in a flow, and then he hates it when bike, bike season ends. Because you can't sustain that kind of, you know, workout pattern. So listen, we want to get in a place as a people where we're madly in love with the person of Jesus. The flames of God are firing. And it's a love flame, guys. It's a love flame that, that emits out of our spirit. And that's what we're going to trigger in each other today. We've been a little bit, you know, kind of whatever. And now we want to fan into flames the fire of this person of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me give you one more verse. That's 2 Timothy, uh, excuse me, 2 Timothy 2. Um, and I gave you the verse. What did I tell you? Fan into flames. Yeah, verse, no, excuse me, 2 Timothy 1, verse 6. Now we're going to go to Romans 8 real quick, and then we're going to have a, we're going to have an exercise. First of all, Romans 8 says, those who live according to the sinful nature, they have their minds set on that which their nature desires. But those who live according with the Spirit of God, they live in accordance with the Spirit. They have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Now, I'm in Romans 8, verse 5. Now, listen. The mind of the sinful man is flesh, but the mind controlled by the Spirit. Everybody just repeat that statement. The mind controlled by the Spirit. What a thought. The Holy Spirit has a mind. It's a person. He's a person. He can literally sink his mind into your mind. It's thought rhyming. And no thought that comes from the Spirit will contradict the Word of God. Trust me. But because the Spirit of God wrote the Word of God. But the Spirit of the Lord can have an ongoing conversation inside your mind. That's how intimate we can be with the Spirit. It says in Corinthians, we, the, the Spirit of God commingles with our human spirit and we become one. It's the highest form of intimacy you can have. The Holy Spirit commingles with your spirit so that your life is sinking with the person of the Spirit. Now, let me, I could talk on this all day, but here's a, here's, here it goes. <clears throat> Verse 13. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you're going to die. But if you live, but by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you're going to live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God 
are sons of God. And that's not a gender word. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Now the book of Acts, it's sometimes called the Acts of the Apostles. That's an inaccurate title over the book of Acts. It actually means Luke wrote Luke, wrote Luke the first book, and Luke the doctor wrote Acts. And he says, he starts out by saying, I told you what Jesus did in human form. Now I'm going to tell you what Jesus does in the form of the Holy Spirit. So it was book two on the life of Christ through the person of the Holy Spirit. And it was 28 chapters of these people walking in sync with, the, with Jesus in spirit form. He's called in the book of Acts, the spirit of Jesus. Now guess what we get to do? We get to write Acts chapter 29. Amen. That's what we get to do. We get to walk with the spirit of God. This is, this is normal Christian life. Normal Christian life is when we have such an intimacy with Christ through the Spirit that His mind is sinking with my mind. His heart is sinking with my heart. And I'm being animated by His power, by His energy, by His life. So I started out as a Christian in 1971 in the Jesus movement. And I got saved. I, you know, I knew, got, learned the four spiritual laws. I started reading my Bible and memorizing Scripture. And uh, the guy that led me to the Lord was in the Navigators, and it was all good. At 18 years old, I'm working out for college football. I'm doing wind sprints on a, on a golf course late one night. And the, the, I felt the Spirit say to my spirit, drop down and begin to praise and worship me. Now, see, I didn't know that you enter His presence with thanksgiving. So in my sweaty, you know, whatever, I dropped down and I said, Lord, I thank you. I praise you. Suddenly, the power of the Spirit of God came on me. And uh, I freaked out. I had never heard of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I was raised in the Presbyterian denomination. No one had ever, not that they don't believe that, but I was never told anything about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And suddenly, I was literally being jacuzzied showered with a power from on high that just about freaked me out. I'm literally shaking in the, you know, I, on the fairway in the middle of the night under the power of God. Suddenly, I go through a deep inner healing experience, which I won't get into. Then I began praying in tongues, and I didn't even know what tongues were. I mean, nobody ever read me. Nobody ever told me about this. And I come up praying in tongues, and guess what I think? I hear this thought, you're having a mental, a nervous breakdown. You're, you're, you're literally having a mental breakdown. And I got, then a dark presence came around me, and I freaked out, and I started flying, sprinting, you know, get, to get away from this presence. And suddenly it dawned on me, this might be the devil. I didn't know enough that there was a devil. And so I turned, and I said, go to hell. I literally said, go to hell. That's not cussing. And... The presence, that dark presence left, and the power re returned. And so I'm literally walking home like this, like I can barely walk under the power of God. And I come home, and I tell this old lady that two of us are living in her basement. Her name was Lois. Lois, something happened. And she goes, oh, 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 oh. I said, what's so funny? She goes, oh, oh. You're being baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. That's just exactly how she talked. She just died at 101 a year ago. She, she remained my, one of my close friends. She goes, you need to talk to Reverend Bob Whitaker. He'll explain everything. So I go and find out he's the man. You know, I, find, I talked to him. I said, Dr. Bob, I think, I'm, I think I'm having a mental breakdown. I think I'm going nuts. He goes, what, well, what happened? And I tell him, he goes, oh. I says, what's so funny? He goes, oh, you've just been baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. I said, where is that in the Bible? I'm seriously, where is that in the Bible? And he goes, I'm glad you asked. He proceeds to literally open up and put a new set of glasses on this young evangelical. And it turns out he was the leader of the charismatic movement of the denomination. So that was a nice, had I, had I gone to anybody else, it would have been really painful. Seriously, it was a setup from the Lord. So 
Now, over the course of my life, I've ebbed and flowed in my intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I've come close. I've been intimate. I've heard his voice. I've walked in his power. I sense his presence. The love of God has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. I sense this affection. I sense the mind of Christ. He's illuminated the scriptures to me. I sense his power, his motivation. I've been directed and led to do things that no human would ever do. Move into the inner city. Do things crazy. Give money away. Go on great exploits. Go to the nations. I've been led to do things only by a person named the Holy Spirit, who is a person. Please use that term for a while. The person of the Holy Spirit. He's not, a, he's, he's not a, an energy, just, you know, he's not a force. He's not a ghost. He's not a spook. He's a person of the Trinity. He's the extension of Jesus on the earth. And he, he wants to be your best friend. He wants to be that close. And so the identifying mark of a child of God is that they're led by the Spirit of God. Now, I have a prayer in my heart. Some of you are going through massive transition right now. Boom. Boom. Some of you are going through major transitions in your lives. Do you know what the number one thing needs to be going on in your heart? I've got to get intimate with the Holy Spirit or I could blow it and have a misstep and end up somewhere I don't belong. Yeah. You've got to get close to Jesus. You've got to get close to the Holy Spirit. Don't be seduced by anything. Get yourself in close, deep connection with the person of the Holy Spirit. I literally could list five people that I think are in massive life transitions right now. And if they don't come close to the person of the Holy Spirit, it'll be tough. And now is the day to inaugurate a new reality, a new deeper reality in our family of churches. And that is we want to be a people that move and have our being in the person of Jesus, the Spirit of God. All the time. All right. So now... I want to lead you into how do you access connection and intimacy with the Spirit in literally just a few seconds or minutes. This is not arbitrary or complicated. The Spirit of God wants to be connected to you deeper than you want to be connected to Him. And it doesn't matter how old you are, how smart you are, how, whether you are in a good place or a bad place. In fact, the worst place you're in, the quicker you want to blow a trail to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> right? So, I'd like you to get into a group of four or five, I guess you already are, wrap your chairs around each other and look at each other in the face. And I'm going to steer you through an experience that is very easy. And then I'm going to give you what I talked about with the Bible verses on the sheet. But if I handed out the sheet, you go, oh no, another lecture from Tim Johns. No, I'm not going to do that. But you will have the biblical notes of what I'm doing. So make a circle with five, six people. Be sensitive to what pro level of proximity they want to have. Kansas City, if you're at home watching, um, if, you, if you're near somebody, just get with them, face them. And I'm going to lead you through a little sequence of how to connect with the Spirit of God. How to connect with the Spirit of God. All right. And actually, actually, Izzy, can you help me? Izzy, can you help me? Can you just give every group a bundle of these, just a little bundle? Okay, thanks, sister. All right, we are going to give you the little list, but I don't want you to be distracted by it. Shh. Okay, here we go. First thing you want to understand is that we live in a spirit world. The spirit world made the material world, right? All things come from heaven. All good things come from heaven. So the spirit world has angels in it, demons in it, Holy Spirit. So the first thing you want to do is squeegee off and ask, the, and ask for covering and protection. That's a, one of the first things you want to do is ask for protection. 
So you, re- you appropriate the power of the blood of Jesus. So right now, I'd like one, and it's very simple. You ask the Lord to put the armor of light around you. And I've actually given you a a verse that points to the full armor of God. We're going to dress in Christ through the blood of Jesus. So basically, you're covering yourself with the presence of the Lord. So I'd like one person in the group to pray out loud for protection over over you, over this group. And those of you in Kansas City or those watching, do the same thing. One person, doesn't need to be long, just ask the Lord to release the armor of light around you. Go ahead. Beautiful. Ask for the Lord to dispatch angels to camp around you. Angels, every person I believe is assigned a guardian angel. Ask the Lord to release the angelic hosts around you. Beautiful. Oh, I love you, Spirit of God. Awesome. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being in this room. Okay. Beautiful. Now, that is a big deal. Hell hates the presence of Jesus. (laughs) Hell hates appropriating the blood of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's called the armor of light, which is really the glory of God coming around the people of God. It's phenomenal. It's a force field. It's incredible. Now see, listen, you don't have to be nervous when you're in Jesus and you're sincerely desiring his leadership. You can't be more confident in the devil's ability to deceive you than God's ability to lead you. Okay, come on now. We've got the Bible. We've got the accountability in the body of Christ. We're not, we're, we're, not, we're not that deceivable if we're humble and under the Bible and in each other's presence and submitted to the Christ in each other. So, you know what I'm saying? If you, really, if you really come up with some kooky, weird things, pretty much the Bible and the body of Christ are going to let you know. So, so relax. God is super interested in talking to you. You don't have to be nervous when you're with a good father. Okay? Is that cool? Yeah. All right, so let's just enjoy this. It's really fun to talk to God and listen to his voice. Okay, secondly, I want you to breathe a little bit, and we're, we're basically calming our central nervous system. Just <sighs> shake it off. I mean, so many of you guys are under such stress. You need to breathe. Breathe. And I love it if you use the word shalom. You attract, your words attract, shalom is the word for peace. And Jesus is the prince of peace. You can say Jesus. I like, I like this verse, I should have listed it. Be still and know that I am God. Why don't you say that? Ah, be still and know that I am God. In other words, I got this, people. I got this. It's all good. (sighs) Do it again. (sighs) Ah, now that's better. Nice. So I'd like one of you to just release. It says, um, The word says, rejoice in the Lord all this. It says, um, here's what it says in Philippians 4. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and, and 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 supplement with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, 
which passes understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So somebody just pray for the shalom of God to hit each person's heart right now and detox from the stress. One person, just pray. I like just saying this, Jesus, you're my Prince of Peace. I like saying that, Jesus, you're my Prince of Peace. You're my Prince of Peace. Y'all, peace should be our primary inner operating system. If you're not in shalom or joy, check yourself Get back to it. Shalom and joy is the internal operating system or disposition of a child of God. It should be your normal. Okay, one more breath. Ah. Shake it off, people. Shake it off. All right, third. I want you to Ask for memories, for the Holy Spirit to put some memories. These are words of testimony. Memories are a person, a place, a time, an experience in which you sensed God's goodness or His presence. Okay? So, this is very biblical to remember the goodness of God. And it could be super simple. Those of you at home, just remember now some good moment, person, circumstance. And what that does is it actually triggers your relational circuits. Now I want you to combine this with out loud gratitude. We rejoice in the Lord always. So I'd like you to pray. Each person give a quick thank you. Now don't, no pressure. If that's uncomfortable, don't do it. But I'd like every person to say something, doesn't have to be long, of, on the, of gratitude to the Lord of praise or rejoicing. Go ahead and do that right now. Just go around the group and brag on Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And those of you at home watching, we're going to publish this little uh, set of notes so you can have access to it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my family, my natural family, my spiritual family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is everybody thanking Jesus? Rejoicing? We need more. That's a good sign. (laughs) 
We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. Jesus, thank you. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I know probably not everybody's done it, but I just, I want to move through this so we can be responsible for time. Okay, shh. How many of you know, it says in James, all good things come from heaven. That includes your body, your, body, your water, your flushing toilets, the food in your fridge, the clothes you're wearing. How many of you know that simultaneously right now, you are being bombarded with thousands upon thousands of good things? How many of you know that? Raise your hand if you know that. Well, at least you do now. So way more good is going on in your life than ever is bad. The bad can't even come close to the good. I don't care how bad it is. It is a fraction of a fraction of all the good. So we have plenty to be grateful for. That's why the Bible says, Shh, rejoice in the Lord always. Always. And again I say, rejoice. You want to get out of your funk? Force yourself to be thankful. And you aren't a hypocrite if you're pushing it. Just, am I a hypocrite if I start walking when I don't feel like it? Oh, Tim, you're just a hypocrite. You're just not into exercise. Well, no, but I'm walking. So I'm, fa you know, I'm, I'm not faking it. I'm actually just intentional. So it's okay to be intentional about thanksgiving even if you don't feel it. That's important to know. Worship is not just a feeling you have to have before you do it. You just do it, and then the feelings will come. Okay, good. Now we're going to have some fun. We're going to invoke the voice of the, the mind of Jesus into your spirit. Now, everybody just look up to me just a second. You've got to understand that your brain was set up to hear God's voice. But it doesn't come just through propositional information. Propositional information like pure Bible study is good, but it's not the portal for God's primary communication. It simply reinforces what God's trying to do. If we're going to be whole-brained, that means we've got to get our relational circuits open. We've got to be whole-brained. And if you're unforgiving, or if you're in your six big emotions like you're ticked off, or you're disgusted, or you're depressed, or you're whatever, those six big emotions, you're probably not, your antenna isn't open, or your internet isn't open to the unseen realm. So the, the, the language of the Spirit is dreams, it's visions, it's, it's impressions, it's inner knowings in your spirit. It's, it's a flow. It comes with impressions. You following me? Um, pictures. And it requires that your relational circuits are open. So I know a lot of people that are super smart engineers. And they say, I've never seen the Lord. I've never heard his voice. And I said, that's because half your brain is on and the other half is switched off. It's very hard to talk an engineer into the presence of the Lord. Because they are so smart, they got to figure it out first before they hear his voice. And you can't go there. You go, go through the doorway of figuring God out. You have to open up your heart and intuition, and then it will make sense. The Bible makes no sense apart from the Holy Spirit. It's a weird book. It's like, well, let me figure God out before I listen. You know, no. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't misinterpret me. I am a completely committed to the Bible and good scholarship and high doctrinal positions. Orthodoxy. The centrality of the scriptures in our foundation. But I'm trying to tell you something. Relational intelligence is about intimacy with a spirit and with one another. The primary way you relate with people isn't through information exchange. It's through a, a, 
uh, it's through attachments, secure attachments in your attachment center. You tracking with me? So some of you smart people, like Jeff, for example, I can pick on Jeff. Jeff's in an evolution in his own life because he's moving from left brain to right brain, so he's whole brained. And his wife has never been happier. One of the smartest guys sitting in this room. And then there's Shane. Now, Shane is a little unique to me because Shane has this artistic side. He started prophesying to me before he even knew prophecy existed. Well, maybe he did. But it was the first time he, he started prophesying to me like within three minutes of our meeting. And he's, an, he's a very smart engineer. So what we're going to do now is if you're in fear... That's going to shut your relational circuits down. If you're in unforgiveness, that's going to... Now, what do you do if you're angry and, unfor, and bitter? What do you do? You can't clean up your anger and uh, bitterness right away. Here's what you do do. You go, God, I'm coming to you angry and bitter. And that opens the door. That's all you got to do is be honest. I'm bitter and angry and I really don't believe in you that much. Now you're talking. That right there starts the process of opening up your relational circuits. Don't try to fix yourself and think that you can then go to God. No, go to God and he'll fix you. Don't fix yourself. Okay, so now on that note, I want you to go back and picture the Lord. By the way, this is biblical language. It's not new age. Gazing on the Lord Looking on the Lord is biblical language. Through the eyes of your heart, if you want a Bible verse, the eyes of your heart is the right frontal cortex of your brain designed to see into the other realm. It's called a sanctified imagination. There you have it. So now close your eyes. Picture Jesus. I keep a picture of Jesus on my computer. An eight-year-old girl drew the picture. Picture Jesus. Now I want you to ask the Spirit. Yeah, there it is. There's the picture of Jesus right up there. It's on my computer. It's on the wall. Now ask this Jesus, what do you want to say to me? And he might talk in in a word picture. Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to us? Tears are a good sign that you're being lubricated by the Holy Spirit. Tears are a sign of a soft heart. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. If you want to, you can write those words or pictures down. Some of the ways the Spirit of God has spoken to me are weird. But it makes sense later when I ask for interpretation. (sighs) Dreams and visions, says my... My children will have dreams and visions. (laughs) Now, don't be troubled if nothing seems to be happening, but you pay attention to your first impressions. 
And don't assume that it's just you thinking. Don't assume they're just your thoughts. The thoughts that come into your mind, mind thinking, might be the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. All right, we're going to spend the rest of our time sharing what you heard. Now, if you didn't, if you don't sense you heard anything, you're not, there's no pressure, okay? No, don't, no biggie. But we're going to practice a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I want to have one or two people, um, if you heard something, I'd like, no, I tell you what, we'll just, we'll, do, well, I would like, is she hearing the Spirit? Did you hear something from the Spirit? Okay, why don't you come on up and just share. Can you do that? Let's just, that builds faith. By the way, this is the way we get kids turned on to the person of the Holy Spirit, is they encounter God. Tell them who you are and what's going on. So, um, I'm Tell Cora. Tell them who you are, Cora. Okay. I'm Cora. Okay. Um, and um, recently we made the decision to homeschool, and I've been pretty sad about it, but... I just feel that he's telling me that even if I'm losing something, I'm also gaining something more. So see, that's better than if mom and dad said it. How many of you think? See, because it's coming up, she's prophesying to herself. She's letting the Holy Spirit speak through her own vocal cords. How many of you felt the presence of the Lord when she's talking on that? That goes deep. Cora, I love you so much. I thank you for being so sensitive to the Spirit. Yeah, it's, and, it's, and she's going through some healing because there was, there was some unmet expectations. There was some grieving going on. And only the Holy Spirit could go and do that kind of deep work. Isn't that exciting? So all in one little shot, she's going through inner healing clarification and commissioning all in the same shot that's some pretty good the Holy Spirit's fairly efficient right <laughs> Cora I love you girl you're amazing thank you let's thank the Lord that's what I'm talking about okay now guys what if our whole church lived like this forever into the next generations what if we were all alive in the Holy Spirit like this all day long flowing in the intimacy with Jesus like this. Okay, so now again, no one should be embarrassed. Sometimes in a setting like this, it's a little weird for new, new timers, and they just like, oh crap, I'll just watch for a little while and see if you people are creepy. Okay, you know, if you start doing weird things, I'm out of here. Okay, some of people are just sitting there, and you know what? That's totally okay. I get it. I get the you're a weird people thing. I get that. I've heard it all my life pretty much. So, but listen, so no pressure on you. But just keep an open mind that maybe God's working. Just keep an open, that's all I ask, just keep an open mind. So now take the, we'll take the rest of our time and you get to go around and share what you sense. Be humble about it. Don't say, thus saith the Lord. You know, don't go that far right now. Just I sense... The Lord might be talking to me, and then we get to kind of, you know, celebrate with you. Okay? Your words aren't equal to the canon of Scripture. So nobody gets to posture up and, you know, start being Moses on us right now. Just, just be humble and say, I sense the Lord might be saying. That's a great way of posturing. So we're going to take the rest of our time now, and then I'll close this up with a blessing as a new way of life in the spirit. All right? And though, hey, I guess here's what I'll do. Actually, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to bless you right now, and then I'm going to let you be done when you're done. Okay. All right. So those of you watching, so here's, here's, here it is. Father, I'm asking in the mighty name of Jesus that you take us into a new era of intimacy with the spirit of God and a new connection 
a new connection with the Spirit of Jesus in the Word of God. And I ask that you would release the fruit of the Spirit, the wisdom and revelation of the Spirit, and the power of the Spirit to be like Jesus wherever we go. God bless you. And I want to say thank you guys for watching. Mwah. We love you. And uh, again, we'll be sending out these notes to you. So praise the Lord. Have a great Pentecost Sunday. God bless you.